Hi, I'm George Foreman, the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Now, when I was boxing, I had Roscoe Hill in my corner. Today, with Boss Boxing Video, you can have Roscoe in your corner. He will teach you from A to Z how to get your body in shape, and most importantly, how to become a good boxer. هذا هو بيج جورج فورمان بطل العالم في الوزن الثقيل في زوز مناسبات مع البطولات والانتصارات فورمان عنده برشا حكايات كي يطلع الرينج ما يهموش الربح قد ما تهمه طريقة الربح والخوف اللي يزرعه فورمان في عينين المنافسين متاعه مع بداية كل ماتش يعاونوا باش البارتي ما تطولش منظر الدم من اثار البونيه نتاعو على وجوه المنافسين حاجه ارتبطت بيه من اللي هز اللقب الاولمبي عام 68 العنف والقوه اللي تميز بيهم فورمان تيلت مسيرتو سهلوا عليه ربح الالقاب لكنهم ما عاونوهش باش يحسن صورته عند الناس اللي بقاو المدة طويلة فورمان بالنسبة ليهم ملاكم عنيف والرحمة كل ما ماهيش موجودة في القاموس متاعه وباش يغير صورته عند الناس جرب فورمان برشا طرق كيف التمثيل والغناء حتى كي يستدعوه في برامج تلفزية باش يحكي على البوكس فورمان كان ما يضيعش الفرصة ويغني ويفدلك وكان لزم يشطح التويست حتى بعد اعتزاله البوكس جرب فورمان انه يزيد يقرب من الناس وكان وراء اطلاق ذا فورمان جريل مشوى بالضوء عندها ميزات عديده ابرزها المحافظه على الاكل الصحي تشيكن يا بوتيتو ويدجز اها ستيك شور بانينيز ايزي سامون ماي سبيشاليتي ام فيجيتابلز ناتشرالي فروم فروزن يو بيت انجوي وايد فرايتي اند ريديوس ذا فات ويز ا لين مين فات ريديوسينغ جريلينغ ماشين فروم جورج فورمان وبإطلاقه المشوى الخاصة اللي تحمل اسمه اكتشفت الناس انه فورمان طباخ جيد وفوق هذا الكل ذا فورمان جريل ما قربتوش برك من الناس لكن زاد ربحته أكثر من 60 مليون دولار في سنوات قليلة <تصفيق> This is George IV and George V. They're all named George Edward Foreman. That's why we're at home. هذا هو إذا جورج فورمان اللي ما يعرفوهش الناس ممثل مغني وطباخ لكن تبقى الصفة الأقرب له ديما البوكسر. واليوم في كاو باش تكتشفوا معانا جورج فورمان المغامر المقاتل واللي ما يهموش الريسك اليوم في كاو باش نرجعوا بكم لنهار 26 افريل 1975 ونمشيو لكندا وين باش نتفرجوا في فورمان ينافس في خمسه ملاكمين في ليله واحده كل ماتش في ثلاثه روندات زعما كيفاش باش تكون البرفورمانس نتاع فورمان وهل انه حضور محمد علي كلاي اللي ربح فورمان قبل بعام بين الجماهير باش ياثر على مردودو نتفرجوا مع بعضنا في كاو الماتش الاول جمع فورمان بالونزو جونسون وهذه هي تفاصيله <تصفيق> The fight is all wearing. 
the usual, the regulatory 10-ounce gloves. Once again, you're looking at the baleful stare of George Foreman. Alonzo Johnson has fought with you so often. What do you look from the door? Alonzo's a good fighter. Well, he could be knocked out if you really hit him. I think George could knock him out if you tag him. But he's a good boxer. He's kind of hard to hit. He's scientific. He was a top ring pro at one time. You know exactly what he's doing. He matured. He's mature and he's developed. And if George gets him, George is going to have to really work. He's just going to get him easy. This is first round action. George, George is doing a lot of dancing, which is not his style. He's moving. I think he's trying to impress me that he can move, but I don't dance that much now. I lay on the rope, so he's dancing for nothing if you think he's going to dance with me. Because I'll play, do the same thing, lay on the rope and tie him out. Be surprised now. Lonzo Johnson is much better than he looks. George said he was going to go right at each of them. Well, I think there's a lot of publicity. It's not as easy as it looks. He might say he can knock his man out, but he is, uh, he's uh, clowning and joking, but it's not as easy. When the man is in 230-something pounds, he's not in the top condition. 232 is more, far more than he has ever weighed for a bout. He's supposed to knock his man out one round, wasn't it? No, he put up his fingers and said he'd knock him out in the second round, Muhammad. Well, we'll see. I think it's harder than you think it is, but we'll see. He's got a name, he's got a reputation. This has been highly publicized, but I think he's got a little too much on his hands tonight. You see him popping and tapping. He's not really going after this man because it takes a lot out of him. He's got 15 rounds to go if he goes the distance with all of them. So you got to make a show out of it. You can't really go out there and do your best. See, he's doing things now that he didn't do in a real fight. He must think it's Easter, Easter Bunny. <laughs> Tell all the people in Orlando, don't be, don't do not fear because they have a private jet to get me out tonight. I've been no, Orlando Florida tonight. Now. They know you're going to be there. Foreman got in a quick left and a right there. The two half decent blows. Well, I'm here. Thrown this round. I'm so here, Howard. And no action. Really. The people here at ABC wanted me to come help you with this tonight, and also told you I had some announcements to make. I came be at Leeds the Catalog Leader store tonight. I'll be there the 29th of this month. That's Leeds the Catalog Leader. Be there signing autographs at 4 p.m. Okay. All right, that's the end of the announcements, gentlemen. Let's get back to this action. The action is George is just jumping around and looking for a good shot, but he's, this man is much better than he thought. This is the first time he's been in there, Alonzo. We approach the end of round one. No action. Alonzo Johnson in the white trunks, the opponent, the familiar George Foreman in the red trunks. No action in the first round. Watch really. that so little, in fact, that the fans... Come up, to come up. George Foreman at the end of the first round. Come up. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. It's come up. That's it. 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 That's it.
12 knockouts to his credit. He's been knocked out only once himself. <coughs> First round action, second of Foreman against five. Jerry Judge, the opponent, in the blue trunks. Foreman in the red. Foreman has worked up a good sweat and doing away with Alonzo Johnson in bout number one. thing about Judge, some of the others may have been afraid, but not Judge. He dreams of a miracle knockout and a big name for himself. He's a gutsy, tough kid, but an inexperienced fighter and should be no match for Foreman. Thing well, he's to doing watch pretty it. good. Right you now he no is. Match, he's doing pretty good. I know he's moving. He's got reach. He's getting in and out. Foreman ain't done. I haven't done nothing yet. He's tagging for him. He got a good left into the midsection Just on Don't say the man there. ain't doing nothing. And don't say he's easy because the man ain't that easy. The man's a good fighter. I'm surprised. These fellows are better than I thought they were. There's Terry Daniels in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, George Foreman's next opponent. You'll remember Terry fought Joe Frazier when Joe was the champion in January of 72 in New Orleans, Florida, uh, Louisiana. That was when Dallas crushed by, oh, good left gotten in by Terry Daniels. A good left by Terry Daniels. Terry Daniels. I mean, J Jerry Judge, forgive me. Howard Cosell, you're not the announcer you used to be. You're you exactly it. right. Sitting next to you, I can go crazy. Jerry Judge in the blue trunks. Now Foreman's getting to the kid. That left stung Foreman, and he's going after him. He had said he would knock Jerry Judge out in the first round. The first round is coming to its close. We're within the final minute. There it went. From that right, Jerry Judge went down. George is now talking while the count continues over Judge again to Ali. He saw the way the kid came back with the left. Now George is talking to Ali. He's paying too much attention to Ali and not enough to young Jerry Judge. This is a tough, gutsy kid, as I said. The bell for round one. George is getting mad. George wanted to keep going after him. Jerry Judge is enjoying it, a big smile on his face. You're doing good. It's hard to tell what's happening to George Foreman. You just saw him half staggering around. The aftermath to George Foreman of that fight in Zaire has been strange indeed. Look at him walking around, looking at the fans who are booing him. This has to be a downright ugly scene for George Foreman. George Foreman dancing now. Jerry Judge actually stung him. Hit him back with a sharp left in the first round. Jerry Judge went down once. But he escaped and came up fighting, surprising Foreman. Seven months ago, George Foreman, so young and seemingly so invincible. Frazier done away with in the second round. Norton, the same thing. Good fighters, both. Howard, that boy hit George with a hard punch and actually shook him up. He did. There's no question about it, Muhammad. That boy's a good boxer. I'm surprised. This is why I told you, Howard, this wasn't a pushover. Now, George is getting a little tired. He's sweating now, losing a lot of uh, perspiration. And by the time he meets the fifth man, who is the best, we can see that this is going to be really rough. Now, if George is in the same man, he'll be tiring the man out. But you must remember that each man George meets is crushed, and George is constantly getting tired. 
and all the people out there in Orlando, Florida, get your tickets and be ready because I'll be there tonight. And you can watch me in person live and you'll see there's no comparison between me and George Foreman. My private jet is just warming up and I'll be in Orlando tonight. Jack Moore, all of y'all be ready. That, of course, was... Jose don't like me Ali. promoting... Foreman is having a difficult time yes, with Jerry a Judge. Time. He's having a difficult time, Howard, and I want you to tell the people the truth. It's not as easy as we thought it would be for George. He has absolutely nothing to gain and everything to lose in this five fight. Plus, Howard, I'm watching him. Today. I'm spying on him. Now, I'm watching. he got into Judge there and hurt him. With a left and with a right. Down went Jerry for the second time in the fight. Referee Harry Davis. But you got to remember, these fellas are getting out. George is tired. He's got to continue. At number two, George. Referee Harry Davis two, has stopped the fight. Second round, it ended. What is happening there? Foreman is not himself. He's going after the kid again. في نهاية الروند الثانية ترشش فورمان وتخل في مناوشات كلامية مع كلاي والجمهور والحكم اللي وقف المباراة وأعلن فوز فورمان في الماتش الثالث منافس فورمان على الرينج كان الملاكم تيري دانيالز The man out of SMU once had a shot at the heavyweight crown against Joe Frazier, January 72. In New Orleans, where they played the Super Bowl that year. Dallas crushing Miami, but in no way doing the damage to the Dolphins that Frazier then did to Daniels. Daniels was finished in the fourth. Daniels has been fighting ever since, not too successfully. Foreman had said he wouldn't knock Daniels out until the third round. At the very top of our show and the tease when he lifted up fingers to indicate the round. Even those closest to George Foreman have been concerned about the fact he's not been the same man ever since Ali beat him. It seems to have been a loss of confidence. George is using the left now effectively against Daniels trying to set him up for that powerful right. Think back to the footage you saw at the top of this show of Foreman doing away with Frazier. Six times he knocked Joe, a truly great fighter, down. And then the same kind of thing against Norton. Compare that with the George Foreman you're looking at today. Hard to believe, isn't it? There was a good right by Foreman. He's got to somehow get a grip on himself a powerhouse right to daniels jerry only 195 pounds foreman at 232 12 pounds more than he weighed when he fought ali and zaire the third opponent for george funk alonzo johnson out and two jerry judge out and two Bizarre, you say? Yes, indeed. Not without precedent, though. Dempsey. Oh, there it was in the first round. Down from a quick left. Foreman coming directly over me again and now challenging Muhammad Ali again. You see my back and Ali's back. Foreman back to the action as Daniels gets up after the eight count. Foreman again with two good lefts. Another good left. Little Terry Daniels, obviously no match for the third of five opponents. Good right. He's getting ready to put Terry away. Foreman just said, see, he can't stay on the ropes, looking down at Ali. He's been paying as much attention to Ali throughout the afternoon. As He'll get all he wants when he meets me. He'll get all he wants. He can whoop these five men. 
All right, we're back live at Maple Leaf Garden. Second round, Terry Daniels, third opponent in the white trunks against George Foreman in the red. And for those of you who have been with us from the beginning, an utterly weird afternoon. I've called it a carnival, a charade, whatever you want to say about it. Some weird behavior, too, by George Foreman, agitated by Muhammad Ali, who's next to me at ringside. This is round two. Daniels went down in the first round, and Foreman had him ready for the kill, but didn't quite do it. I'll not soon forget the scene of Jerry Judge. The fight over. The referee declaring Foreman the winner. Foreman oddly still going at him and the two of them wrestling to the canvas. Foreman obviously out to try to reestablish his confidence in himself. As I said, a bizarre occasion, but not without pressing. Dempsey fought five men in one day in Boise, Idaho in 31. Battling Levinsky, light heavyweight, 1915. Fought a man in Brooklyn in the morning, a man in New York in the afternoon, a man in Waterbury, Connecticut in the night. And all three went the distance with him. Terry Daniels is hurt. The superior weight and strength just pushed him back against the ropes then, together with the punching and the pain registered in his face. He's trying to hang in there, though. In 1958, in the little town of Bingham, Utah, Lamar Clark went against five opponents. Did away with them all. Three years later, he lost to a 19-year-old kid whose name then was Cassius Clay. Oh, what a left by George Foreman. Little Terry Daniels, little at 195, next to the 232-pound Foreman. You see him staggering. He's ready to go. It's a game kid, but he's ready to go. Oh, that left. Now he's got him pinned against the ropes. He's holding on. Still didn't go down. He still didn't go down, Mahal. Yeah, but he's got him on the ropes. He might go, though. Still might go. But if he can just cover up and use that rope tactic. He's got him now. George is tired, too. George has got two more fresh men waiting for him. Now remember that. Foreman just told the referee to stop it. And the referee... is walking after Terry's handlers. Terry's handlers were over-talking to me and screaming, no, no, he's not. They've started fighting again. The referee off in the corner with the handler. I told you this is the weirdest occasion you'll ever want to see. He started fighting because he's not really a fight. The ref, he's fighting George now. The trainer's fighting there. نهاية البارتيفيل فمن سهرة فورمان يوم 26 أبريل في تورونتو ما كانتش عادية بما أنه في آخر الروندة الثانية تعارك فورمان مع الناس الكل الحكم منافسه تيري دانييلز والمدرب متاعه ومرة أخرى يضطر الحكم أن يوقف البارتي باش يتعدى فورمان للمنافس الرابع متاعه فرد ليلة واللي كان شارلي بولايت at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens in an absolutely zany non-advertisement for boxing. We're coming up to our fourth bout. Charlie Polite is the man you're looking at, the fourth opponent. He's a veteran of 46 pro fights. We may really see a fight. Well, we're really seeing fights now. These guys are fighting George until they get hit. And, uh... George is getting tired of it. Boone Kirkman should be flush. That's what I want to see how he can go. I don't know what this fella can do here, but I'll know after this round. Charlie Polite showing a little movement. George, what is that? Charlie Polite's going to look like he's pretty good. He's determined. He's not afraid. The main thing is how it, these guys are not afraid. What is this new bouncing technique of Foreman? Well, I really don't know. I think he's trying to throw me off. He know I'm watching him. And he, if he's smart, he'll won't let me see his secrets. Uh, he won't do his best because he knows that a professional can watch you and steal uh, your style or uh, he can master your style. So I think he don't want me to really see what he can do. So you're saying now, you're going to win your 
Charlie Polite in the black trunks, round one of his scheduled three-rounder against George Foreman in what has turned out to be a series of preposterous events. There's Boone Kirkman right over there in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Of course, Foreman fought him once before and did away with him early. But after going against four different guys and not looking like the old foreman used to, who knows? Oh, you just saw George wave There you go. He's laying on the ropes like us. And like, they do my style. If he lay on the ropes like that, see, George pulls him off. George don't want to lay on the ropes because he'll tie himself out. Take the ropes, Jack. Take the ropes. Time out. Take the ropes. Hit the ropes. Hit the ropes. Good left by George with Ali in the background serving as manager, play trainer, ropes. whatever of the Time five out, play ropes. Cover up, cover up. Don't let him knock all of you out. The slow-paced round. David Foreman Ruffin whoop both of them. With wild punches there. And Foreman is tired. You can see Where's it. Where's David? Where's David? As we count down the end of the first round. I Foreman. got David Ruffin on the temptation. Say he'll whoop all of them. Good for you. That's right. Back live, Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, round number two. Do what I tell you, Charlie, I'm the expert. Charlie Polite, the black trunks, this is the fourth opponent. When he Alonso come at you, Johnson, hit the ropes, Jerry come Judge, up. Judge, Jerry Daniels, the fights all ended in the second round. Although there was great controversy and great disfavor by the fans when the Terry Daniels bout ended because Terry was still alive and well, up and wanted more. And he actually went at it more. And then the trainers came out and went at it. He ain't gonna do nothing. An absurd he, scene, he one of many nothing. this afternoon. Hit the ropes. He ain't gonna do nothing. He won't do nothing. Just lay on the ropes. Woo! Charlie Woo! Charlie Polite making the offensive move moves. Foreman laying back and Hit the ropes. He's quite scared. evidently He's scared. tired. Lay on the ropes. Hit the ropes. Hit the ropes. Hit the ropes. There you go. Hit the ropes. There you go. B. Hit the ropes. That's it. Make it work. That's it. Hit the ropes. ropes. Make it work. Make it work. Hit the ropes. Make it work. Hit the ropes. Make it work. Hit the ropes. Make it work. Make it work. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Bowman held Polite's left glove and kept striking away at him with the right. The light finally He's got a rough coming fight up. on his hands, Howard. This bar's pretty good. He's doing my style now. Hit the ropes. Let the judge run himself out. All you got to do is hit the ropes and tie up. There you go. He's playing it smart now. Come up. Come up that chin and hit the ropes and let George fight himself out. All right, you've heard the exhortations to Charlie Polite of Muhammad Ali, and indeed, Polite is run. using a lot of don't Ali's tactics hit against Foreman and Zion. Come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up. Come up. Come up. Come up. And any time that Ali says, come up. Charlie, come up. now Foreman right above us, laying it into Polite against the ropes. I take direct exception to what Ali said. Charlie Polite is not a good fighter. He has won 13, lost 30, come and grown come three. Hey, hey. There you go. Look at that. That's hardly professional, is it? In tactics, Ali is right. He's doing my style, man. He's running George out. He's smart. He's taking my style. Oh, he's got George Vaughn. We might be upset tonight. This is the there second round. Charlie Polite in the black trunk. And it is interesting, isn't it, that the rope tactics absolutely undo Foreman. The bell for the end of the second round. And the crowd very much 
Swift, Charlie Polite. Desperate to knock this man. Hit the rope! Out. Hit the rope! More than ever. Hit the rope! Muhammad, more than ever, I have to wonder why Foreman went into this thing. Polite just scored with a left. Foreman is enraged. He's after him. Wants to hey, put him away. Hit the rope! Hit the rope! Hit the rope! Hey! 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 Hit up! Hit the rope! Hit the rope! Hit the ropes! This Hit certainly the ropes. won't do much to build up Foreman's hopes for a rematch against Ali. Okay! Okay! Oh, yeah! 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 There you go! Hit the ropes! Hit Isn't the ropes! That absurd. Ali yelling in the background. Hit the ropes. Hit the ropes! Foreman again. Hit the ropes! First he danced around half amateurishly, and then the attempt set up at Woo! And Polite coming back at Foreman. There's no scoring in these fights, of course. Hey, play the rope! Play the rope! Play the rope! Play the rope! Round three. Foreman in the red, Charlie the light in the black. There you go! Fly him out! Get him tired! There you go! Play the rope! Tie him out! Tie him out! There you go! Play the rope! There you go! There's simply no shutting Muhammad Ali up at this point. Play the rope! He is so delighted to see Polite using the rope. Polite waving Foreman on. Polite was laughing at him when he went down. It was more of a push than a punch. And Ali is driving himself into a horse-throated frenzy, as you can hear. No stop. شارلي بولايت كان أول بوكسور في السهرة اللي نجم يستحمل ضربات فورمان حتى نهاية الروندة الثالثة زعما كيفاش باش يكون أداء المنافس الخامس والأخير الفورمان بون كيركمان Well, I give Kirkman a good chance because his resistance is low. George is punched on his spot. He's training now. Just leaned over and said to us, I'm tired, man. And yet he begins with up, brightly move. foot moves. Play the ropes, Brightly move. for George. Play the ropes, move. Play the ropes, And move. immediately Ali goes into his play the ropes, boom chant. Beat him like I'm going to beat Hobble Coastal. in the white trunks, Foreman in the red. Recapping on the day, Johnson, the fight stopped in two. Judge, the fight stopped in two. Terry Daniels, the fight stopped in two, but Daniels still on his feet and apparently very much alive, and the two went at it after the fight was stopped. Terry Daniels and George Foreman. And then Charlie Polite with a 13, 30, and three record Went the full three rounds with Foreman. Foreman grossly out of shape. 232 pounds, far above his best fighting weight. Foreman without his manager, Dick Sadler, without the familiar Archie Moore and Sandy Sadler in his corner. 
Keep that going up. An obviously Keep troubled up, young man who Keep has lost up, his move. confidence in the wake of his loss to Ali last October in Zaire. In circumstances today that turned out to be depressing. A charade. There you go, Oh, Dad. a good right by Foreman. Then, though. Stung Boone Kirkman forced him to hold on. Tell everybody there in the land no fault. I'm going to give him my head right now, and I'll be there. Well, you heard the champion. He's got his own exhibition in Orlando. Boone Kirkman went through the ropes. He's in desperate trouble. The left floored him. So Foreman, who professed to be dead tired, here in the first round, Floors the man with the best record of all five of his opponents. Boone Kirkman, who is a promotion of the late Jack Hurley. A personal promotion. Jack Hurley could sell anybody anything. One of the glibest promoters in the history of boxing. Or most glib. Take him out, George. With the five bouts, George Foreman against Boone Kirkman. Foreman in the red trunks, Kirkman in the white. Let me reset this weird series of events this afternoon. In the very first fight, Alonzo Johnson stopped in the second. Jerry Judge stopped in the second. Terry Daniels unpopularly stopped in the second. Charlie Polite went all three rounds. <coughs> Foreman has been having a very difficult time today, has been most unimpressive. His behavior has been strange, to say the least, his personal behavior. And he obviously was seeking to prove something here today. What, I don't know. Maybe something to himself. Maybe a desperate attempt to reestablish his confidence in himself as a fighter. Again, I say, only 25 years of age, with that remarkable, unbeaten record, with the consecutive knockouts over Joe Frazier to acquire the title, and over Kenny Norton in Caracas, Venezuela, one would hardly think that one loss to Ali, that eighth-round knockout in Zaire, would so undo him. And yet... In a strange and psychological way, it almost seems to have done just that. Foreman right now, as you see him, is a very tired man, even though he decked Kirkman in the first round. Once again, as in Zaire, the arms seem almost listless. The foot movement is absent, though he has never been one to be swift of feet, to be a boxer. And so this afternoon, which has descended or degenerated into a carnival, put it as you will, has been an afternoon that cannot have a wholesome aspect in George Foreman's boxing career. A good left by Boone Kirkman that hurt George Foreman. Exactly what we're talking about. One has to wonder why, oh why, did George Foreman do it? So out of this whole sequence of eerie circumstances, one thing emerges. George Foreman is not the fighter that he was before he fought Muhammad Ali. That seems a fair presumption under the circumstances. And that resets this afternoon in Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens. Ali himself was utterly agitational here at ringside with me. He seems to have hit to the very nerve center of Foreman's brain. He had Foreman undone. George out of shape to begin with at 2.32, and he rendered himself into a horse frenzy as he screamed the rope tactics, the rope tactics to each of the five opponents in succession. Charlie Polite used those very tactics to endure the whole three rounds. As the second round comes to its end, we will be back in just a moment. Foreman in the red trunks, Boone Kirkman in the white. To salvage something, oh, a good right lead by Kirkman. To salvage something out of the day, Foreman would like to put this man away. It's got to come suddenly. 
Don't forget, this is a man who in November of 1970, November 18th to be exact, Foreman knocked out in the second round. You can understand this. Foreman were in his 30s, but he's still a kid. Now he's desperate. He's pouring leather. He's got Kirkman staggering all over the place and holding on, as you see. Foreman looking over at his corner, getting instructions. We're in the third and final round. It will be the 12th round of action for George Foreman here today. More incidentally than he had ever gone before on any single occasion. Kirkman again got a good right lead on George. Kirkman is cut over the left eye. There's a slit over the left eye. Foreman quickly going to work on it. But George is tired. You can see it. Referee Sammy Lovegrass is examining the eye. Sammy separates them. As the fight winds down to its end, you will hardly memorialize the events here at Maple Leaf Gardens today. بعد ثلاثة روندات في الماتش الخامس و12 روندة في سهرة واحدة أجد فرمان أنه ما زال عنده ما يقول في البنية متاعه في فيديو الأسبوع نرجع مرة أخرى في كاو محمد علي كلاي والمرة هذه باش تشوفوه في فيديوهات ناترة مع فنانين ومشاهير في سهرة لتوزيع جوائز رياضية هذا كلاي يختبر قدرات سيلفستر ستالون أو روكي في البوكس وهذا كلاي مع ويل سميث خلال تصوير إعلان الفيلم علي هذا محمد علي كلاي مع ذا جاكسون فايف في الختام أحلى كاو كلاه محمد علي كلاي في حياته
نستناو نجمعة جاية في كاو باش نكملو حكاية فورمان وباش تشوفوا معانا مباراة من نار جمعة فورمان بإيفاندر هوليفيلد